Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. This is Jennifer Paulson. I'm the Director of Development and Communications, and I will be going through an advocacy refresher before turning it over to our President and CEO, Eric Samuels. So Eric will be going over our policy priorities and the overall reason why we are doing this and some additional logistics. This webinar is being recorded, and we will also send out the um, slides and other information. So let's get started. All right. So this is kind of a, it's a refresher. We only meet with the legislat legislature uh, every two years. So I always need a refresher. So I'm discussing there are some people who either haven't attended or do, but you know, it's kind of nice to hear um, why we do this and if it makes a difference. So yes. Um, so why advocate and who advocates? So everybody advocates, nobody can do it alone. And we know that there is strength in numbers. So I love the Margaret Mead. Of course, many of you are familiar with it, but never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So a lot of times when I feel like, um, you know, I, I'm just hitting my head against a wall, I think of that. And then there's uh, the quote above from Judy Ann Buffmeyer from Salt Lake City. And she says, she begins with nobody can do it alone. And that's true. Um, and legislators help with the process, but the stakeholders provide the passion. So we are the stakeholders, we're providing the passion. So what is advocacy? And it's the act of arguing in favor of something such as a cause, idea, or policy, um, active support. So instead of arguing, we can just think of educating um, so we're educating on behalf of uh, the, the issues that are important to us. Homelessness Awareness Day, so it's next Tuesday, February 28th, and it will take place at the Texas State Capitol, and we'll have the room, um, and we'll send that information out to you as well, but we'll have it here on the next slide. Um, the event is designed to educate our legislators of the importance of continuing to fund homelessness prevention and housing programs. So here's the agenda. We only have the room until 11.30, so um, I had to revise the schedule a bit. But 10.30 to 11.30, and please try to be there as close to 10.30 as possible so that we have time to do all of this. But we are meeting in room 3E.4, and again, this information will be sent out, um, conference room. And we'll do a check-in, pick up materials um, that you will leave behind in the offices, a meet and greet, and a briefing about the day. And then 11.45, we want to see all of your pretty smiles on the south steps of the Capitol for a group photo. And then we'll have lunch on our own. Um, many of us will eat in the Capitol Grill, so that's always a popular place if you want to. Um, there are many restaurants around, like on Congress, and we'll provide ideas on um, where those, and you have plenty of time, so you have an hour and a half. Most of our office visits will begin at 1.30. So um, we'll make sure that you know that so that you can come back in time and plan accordingly. And then we will have a report back form that we want um, just the lead person for each group to fill out for your, on behalf of your group so that we can track how the visits went, who met with whom, and um, all of that. So why is advocacy important? Because your voice matters and you know your com community. You are the expert in your community and what's going on with these issues. So you can impact legislative decisions and you can educate your legislators and help shape policy, believe it or not. So how to advocate. Uh, first, attend Homelessness Awareness Day. Uh, connect with your members of Congress and their staff. So anytime that you have the opportunity, invite them for a tour of your agency to showcase your work. Make phone calls to ensure your members of Congress know what we need them to do. And uh, this is, you know, we need to, them to help reduce homelessness. So uh, educate your community on homelessness. A lot of times uh, the community, you think they know what's going on, but that's not always the case. And then work with your partners to support public policy solutions and coordinate support for legislative action. So some strategies. Um, 
express support or concern. So this is with a decision maker at, um, that you're advocating in front of. Uh, express support or concern about a public policy directly with your elected official and community leaders. And then there's community person-to-person -person advocacy. Anytime we have a conversation with someone about homelessness, whether it's our neighbor, a friend, a colleague, um, we're educating and advocating, or we should be at least, um, if we're talking to them about homelessness. And then media advocacy, and that's um, using the media to communicate your point of view. And this helps bring awareness. So examples of this advocacy in, in action. So um, communicating with your legislators, uh, develop a personal relationship. So you want to develop a ideally with the legislator, but a lot of times we um, meet with their staff and they are just as important because they're the ones who have the ear of the legislator. So we want to influence their position um, on an issue to make sure that they, you know, and, th and that's why we're there, right? We're there on Tuesday to give them all the information that they, we can possibly give them that they would need to make an informed decision on an issue. Uh, Sign-on letters, emails, and handwritten letters are all important, um, but those can get buried easily. So it's more effective face-to-face -face meeting, and then the second most effective is a phone call. So communication, though, should be ongoing. So even though we're meeting on Tuesday face-to-face -face with at least a staffer, um, we have to keep that conversation going and don't forget to follow up. So if you tell them, you know, I'm your resource for these numbers, for this information, make sure that you follow up. So providing relevant and up-to-date information. Um, so an important component is the research and education. And you want to make sure that you are providing that information that reflects the real picture of your area. It's a great tool to educate your legislators and it can change attitudes and misconceptions. We've been in offices before where we're providing this information and the staffer was like, I had no idea. And um, I think it, it really does make a difference. And then media is important. So, you know, writing letters to the editor of your local paper, inviting media to events, and using social media are all great ways to broadcast information on homelessness awareness. And then I like this because it's Dr. Seuss. So why advocate? Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So the legislature. Overview of the process and etiquette techniques. So just a few facts about the Texas legislator, legislature. Um, legislators are people, legislature is the body. Uh, there are 150 Texas representatives, they're elected for a two-year term, 40 committees within the House, and 31 Texas senators for four-year terms, 16 committees within the Senate, and legislation must pass both houses in exactly the same form to be adopted. They both use a committee process and each advocate, advocate Advocate has two legislators representing, so each of you have a legislator, um, two re a senator and a representative for your area. So overview of the legislative process, basically a bill's introduced, uh, many bills are introduced, some don't even get to the second stage, which is the committee hearings. But basically I think we all know um, that through these hearings, if they're passed, it means that they can move forward. Um, eventually, it will go to the governor, and if the governor doesn't veto it, then it becomes a law m most of the time by January 1st of the following year. Okay, so you're meeting with your legislators and their staff. So what to wear? dress professionally and bring comfortable shoes for walking. Um, some people bring like a bag with walking pair of shoes and um, their visit pair of shoes. Arrive on time, so make sure you're there on time. That makes a big statement if you're late 
and you you know you're running in at last minute. Now sometimes it happens that you're um, meeting before if you have a meeting meetings back to back that you're running a little over, and you know I, I would say no more than five minutes. But if you can send someone ahead just to um, let them know that that's what's happening. Um, expect your meeting to only last about 15 minutes. And then you just want to make sure that you're organized um, decide who will do the talking. So you have just this limited amount of time. You want to take advantage of it and decide who will lead the conversation and then um, who's going to go. You know, all of you should be able to, to speak if you want to. But instead of everyone talking at one time, it makes sense just to be a little more prepared and organized. Um, and then be prepared to talk to staff. Like I said, a lot of times um, that's who you're going to speak with. Um, and they are very important, though. They have the ear of the legislator, so don't, dis don't discount them. Introduce yourself as a constituent. This is very important. Um, there are some people who won't meet with anyone but their constituents, so uh, it's very important to say that you are a constituent. And make a connection. You know, it's, it's interesting, um, sometimes you find out, we met with someone in DC and we found out that his mom worked at a small nonprofit in Dallas. So that was our connection every time we went to see him. And then state your purpose, keep the conversation on topic and remain diplomatic at all times. So use, you want to use stories and data um, Specific data to your district or to their district is the best. And then a personal story uh, packs an emotional punch. That's It really can make your visit stand out. So um, we will provide leave behind materials, but if you also have specific data to your area, bring that as well. Um, if you don't know any of the answers, if they have questions, let them know that you'll follow up. This is also a great opportunity to follow up with that. Um, and then offer yourself as a resource. So anytime that they need information um, or that they want to, you know, invite them for a tour, you're the resource. That's who you want them to contact if it's about your area and that's it's your district that they're representing. And then make a clear request for action. So we're going to be requesting that they maintain funding, and Eric will go through more of that. But you want to be clear instead of just, you know, yeah, well, so thanks, and uh, come see us anytime. We want to make that ask. So the do's and don'ts. Um, be relaxed, polite, assertive. Uh, know how your position helps their district. Educate, tell the truth. Don't forget to follow up. This is really important, and have fun. So obviously, you don't want to burn bridges, be combative. Um, discuss political campaigns and dismiss talking with a staff member. Like I said, sometimes um, you know you'll see them each time, and you want to build that rapport. And then never assume. Never assume that legislators will or will not support an issue or an, an initiative. All right. So some instructions for the captains that have signed up. Um, you're primarily responsible for coordinating your group's visit, so um, make sure that everyone is uh, gets gets to the Capitol and uh, know what's going on, and especially if they're not able to attend this webinar. So, and then make sure that they're all at the same appointments to show collaboration and cohesiveness. Some of you have larger groups, and will you know you may need to to uh, split up just depending. Sometimes the offices are really small, and when you try to put a lot of people in a room, it gets a little overwhelming. But we'll address that. Um, and then it's, it's crucial that your community members discuss the challenges associated with serving local homeless populations. And again, we'll provide you with the tools and resources, but do bring your local data and have fun. All right, a little logistic. Parking at the Capitol, and Eric will have a map and all of that, but I just want to go over it really quickly. There is a Capitol Visitors Parking Garage, and it's 1201 San Jacinto, and that's located between Trinity and San Jacinto Streets at 12th and 13th. It's free for the first two hours. Get there early. It does fill up, and it's a dollar for each half hour thereafter. 
there are meters around, so you may have to to uh, forego the capital garage and go to find a meter. And then, as I said earlier, there is lunch available at the Capitol Grill. It's cafeteria style. And then following the appointment, we will determine a place um, where you can drop off the leave behind materials and just, you know, we want to hear how it went. Um, and one person from each visit will need to visit to fill out one of the leave behind sheets. And this we track so we know how successful we were. And for those of you who are not able to make it in person, um, we would like for everyone to call your legislator on uh, February 28th, so on the same day, and identify that it's part of Homelessness Awareness Day, and then we'll provide you a call to action script for those of you who would like to do this. So in conclusion, Individual participation drives collective action. So your participation matters. And if you haven't already and you can attend next Tuesday in person, please sign up now. So there is the link there. You can also contact me, Jennifer at THN with, uh, org, with any additional questions. All right. So I'm going to now turn it over to Eric. And Eric, she's one moment while I do this, sorry. Screen. While she's doing that, just let me say hi and reintroduce myself. I'm Eric Samuels, President and CEO of Texas Homeless Network. And uh, once we get the screen up, okay, looks like we have it up. Okay, hopefully everyone is seeing my PowerPoint. Jennifer, can you confirm that? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so um, before I begin, I uh, wanted to ask you all if you can. Um, I can't see you, uh, and obviously we can't hear you. We can't put you... Uh, everyone on the mic because we get a lot of feedback, but if we can have folks type in, Jennifer, that's possible, correct? People can type in questions and comments? Yes. Okay, so if you can use your GoToMeeting tool there or your GoToWebinar tool there and um, type in qu any questions you have and make any comments, uh, that you have, I would appreciate that. Hopefully, we can have a little bit of back and forth. Although I know it's a little awkward since we we're not talking to each other uh, verbally. But um, please feel free to to write in. Um, so uh, I just wanted to also explain before I get into this. This had this is a really busy time. Uh, the legislative session once every two years they try to crank. Okay, I was told that my audio went out. I'm not sure when it went out. Okay, um, I am sorry about that. Hopefully my audio does not go out anymore. Uh, so I was saying how busy this session is, and as an example, we uh, had a committee meeting for the House Appropriations 
um, last Monday at 7.30. And as part of that, we wanted to give testimony about how important it was to keep HUD funding, or I'm sorry, funding for homeless programs in place. So we had to wait around until 4.30 that day to do that. And uh, recently, just uh, 30 minutes ago, um, Jennifer was working with Terry Caswell uh, on a proclamation that will be presented to the floor on Monday, I believe, um, about um, homelessness. And so uh, things are they're, they're moving and grooving, and um, it's just a really busy time. So thank you for participating in this and taking the time to do this. It's very important. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and get into this. And I will just go ahead and say right now, uh, the audio uh, could go out. Again, if it does, I'll, I'll try to bring it back on as quickly as possible, but hopefully that does not happen. So, Homeless Awareness Day. Why are we doing this? So this year, the reason we're doing this is we're really trying to introduce ourselves, uh, make sure that those legislators and those, their staff know who we are, uh, where they can find us, um, and I, make sure that they call on us when they need data about homelessness. We also want to tout our accomplishments. There's a lot of good that's been done. We have a lot to be proud of in the state of Texas in the efforts that we've implemented to end homelessness. So we really need to make sure that they know that. We also want to make our best case of why it's so vitally important that legislators vote on the side of our communities keeping the funding for programs working to eliminate homelessness. That's very important for this session. So why it's so important that we make sure the legislators hear from us? Number one, it's always important. I um, haven't done this that much, but I've done it a little bit, and I've never had a representative senator or a member of their staff say we don't want to hear from you. In fact, most of the time, they're glad to hear from you, and they may not always vote the way that you want them to or choose to fund the thing that you think that they should, but they do appreciate hearing from you. Um, I wanted to uh, play a little clip, very, very short, won't take up much time, that demonstrates some of this from the committee meeting last week, and I'm hoping you can hear it. Um, I will turn it up a little bit. Let me just, before we go any further, uh, Jennifer, can you make sure that that is being heard? I can't hear it, so if okay. there's another place where you can turn up the volume, maybe. You know what, we're just going to bypass that. I don't want to hold up with any more technical difficulties. Basically, what was said during that meeting um, was said by the chairman of the committee, the House Appropriations Committee. He was talking to a person who was advocating uh, on behalf of uh, homeless funding uh, for uh, programs in the Austin area, and it's someone who worked with people directly, and it's, it's um, testimony that this chairman said that he rarely heard or he didn't hear enough of. He's used to seeing spreadsheets and, and you know, financial numbers and all that, but he didn't hear the story, the personal stories, and he really appreciated that. So um, I just want to point that out, you know, as you think about participating in this, that those stories, this information that you were sharing with legislators and their staff, and it'll be primarily their staff, um, they are very important and they really stand out in what they hear day to day because they don't hear enough of that personal message. So I think it's very important that we, we get that through to them. Um, I also wanted to say that, um, as I said before, they need to know who we are. They need to know that there are advocates for people experiencing homelessness. And believe it or not, like Jennifer said earlier, in some cases they don't know that. Uh, they don't know that there's a Texas Homeless Network. They don't know that there is a um, uh, Houston Coalition for the Homeless, for example. And so they need to know that. They need to know that they can call us for information, for data, and support if needed. And like I said before, they need to know that we're doing a good job 
and that homelessness is down 32 percent since 2012. We know what we're doing and it's working and, and they should be listening to us and we need to tell them that. So this session, the 85th Texas Legislative Session, is all about reducing funding. That's what I hear uh, from everybody up there. And as part of this, it's an overall uh, effort to reduce funding for the state GR funds, um, general revenue funds. What um, they're trying to do with this funding is they're trying to cut across several programs, but some of the programs that they're looking at cutting or reducing through the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs would greatly affect the work that we do. So they are looking to reduce two programs through TDHCA, the Homeless Housing and Services Program, or HHSP, and the Housing Trust Fund Program. And these reductions over the biennium aren't enormous, but they are reductions that we don't need right now. We're, we've got a lot of momentum. We're making a, a good um, effort in ending homelessness and in a lot of our communities we're doing a really really good job and this funding helps with that so we don't need to go in the opposite direction and reduce this funding we need to if anything we need to increase this funding but at the very least we need to keep that level of funding also through the TDHCA uh, budget they the House and the Senate are looking at cutting the Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care Technical Assistance Program grant. That is slated to be totally cut. Um, and again, this is not the direction we want the state to take in regard to funding programs designed in homelessness. That particular grant, again, it's not an enormous grant, but what it does is it allows uh, my staff here to apply for funding on behalf of the Balance of State of Texas and in a lot of cases, a large amount of funding. Last year, um, a large amount of funding was applied for and 6.9 million was awarded to the Texas Balance of State and grantees around that area. In addition to that, that grant is used uh, as leverage for funding through HUD. So that $50,000 grant is used to leverage $200,000. So it's extremely important that that's kept and that the HHSP and the Housing Trust Fund money is kept. Also, um, we need to point out to the folks that we meet with that the Healthy Community Collaboratives grant, it's out there, it's not slated to be cut, but that is a grant that our communities could utilize more if the match requirement didn't restrict the sources of leverage to just private funds. As it stands now, to use that money, you have to come up with an equal amount of private funds. If they could use public funds in these communities, then more of this money could be used and more support given through the Healthy Community Collaboratives grant. Those things, all of those points and, and, and those priorities are going to be on our legislative priorities form that I'll show you a little bit later and we're going to have infographics for every one of them so to help illustrate the point when you meet with staff. So I'll get to that, all of that a little bit more later. Um, so I'm going to go on to some logistics. Now the reason I'm getting into logistics despite the fact that Jennifer talked about uh, logistics is that I have uh, heard from folks that it's important for us to make this as easy as possible on those who will be participating. And we need to simplify it down to where we park, you know, how we enter the building, where we go once we enter the building, everything like that. So that's what I'm doing with this. Um, and before that, though, I'm going to make sure there aren't any questions. It looks like maybe some folks have asked questions and okay so there's a question uh, will this be posted on THN's website we will record it and we will make sure it is sent out and posted it is being recorded actually right now and uh, someone asked if we were arranging meetings between the attendees and the appropriate legislator oh I'm sorry the answer was sent out already that we were setting up meetings with committee members and I'll get to that in a little bit so on to some logistics, and this is really simplified logistics. So 
Um, I am sorry if it's too simplified, but um, maybe it'll help you out. So as Jennifer said, we would suggest, if you can, to park at the Texas Capitol Visitors Parking Garage on that day. I would expect that there will be room, especially if you get there early enough. And I think with our starting time for our prep meeting at 1030, that probably will be early enough. If um, if you don't, there could be, uh, if, there, if it's full, there could be parking uh, on the meters around there. But I would expect there will be parking at the Capitol. So here's a map of, of the Capitol. I mean, of the, the Capitol Visitors Parking Garage. And then um, you can see how it, where it is in relation to the Capitol. Very close, uh, within a pretty um, easy walking distance. And I've even mapped it out here for you. So if you park here, you can see where the arrow is. We suggest you go into the east entrance of the Capitol. And so um, this is the way that we feel it would be best for you to go into the Capitol to make it to the prep meeting. Okay, and then if you don't like the other map, here's the satellite image so you can see what it looks like. I try to get an image of what it looks like um, right outside the door through Google Maps or Google uh, there are maps of locations, but they don't have anything that close. They can't drive into the Capitol, apparently. So when you walk in, we are going to ask uh, some folks to help out with guiding you through the Capitol, because it can be a little confusing. So you're going to see someone, hopefully that doesn't look as schlumpy as this. That's me, by the way. Um, you're going to see someone with a blue THN shirt on. And they are going to be at that east entrance. If I go back, once you walk in, there's going to be someone there, and they can meet you, and you will walk with you to the conference room where we will have our prep meeting. So again, this is an effort to try to make this as simple as possible for everyone. OK. Um, this is where we'll be meeting, that meeting, right there, that meeting room there, 3E.4. It's conference room 3E.4. If you are confident um, in your ability to traverse the Capitol, you can go straight there. Or, like I said before, you can meet um, someone with a blue THN shirt, and they will help you uh, locate the conference room. Okay, so when we get into the prep meeting, what we're going to do is we're going to use that hour for kind of a pregame prep talk. This is when we're going to give you the materials you'll need. We're going to try to have everything in folders, nice folders with all of um, the materials in the script uh, that you can use during your visit. Um, and We'll go over that while we're in the room, and we'll talk about the things that are important to cover um, and make sure that you have everything that you will need to leave behind. So we'll have leave behind folders with our Homeless Awareness Day materials, and let me um, show you some examples of some of those. Actually, I have them right here. Let me go back to that. So you'll have uh, the leave behind folders with the homeless awareness materials and coffee cups, which I'll show you in a second. And then after our meeting, we will get together for a picture at the front of the Capitol, as Jennifer was talking about. And then once that's done, um, we can go into the cafeteria. Or if you have some other visits that you want to make with uh, your legislators, you can you can make that at that time. Um, and those were ones that you may have set up individually. Um, the uh, cafeteria will show you uh, where uh, that is, and uh, we can go there as a group, depending on how many people we have. I, I think we'll be able to do that. Um, one of the things that I was uh, told about these visits is that Visiting the cafeteria is even a little 
uh, daunting for folks because you don't know whether or not you actually can go in there because it's right there uh, where the uh, House Representatives' offices are. So you have to walk through the hallway that um, leads to all of the representatives' offices. So it almost looks like a place that's reserved for them, but it's not. It's a place where any of us can go and uh, we'll go there and do some more prep if we need to for our meetings and, and just um, uh, have lunch and, and catch up if we uh, haven't seen each other for a little while. Okay, so let me go ahead. And, so these are some of the um, materials we'll be giving you. There's some leave behinds. Uh, this is uh, something that shows the decline in homelessness. Uh, 34,208 people experiencing homelessness in 2012, down to just a little over 23,000 uh, last year. Um, we'll have that to help us illustrate our point about how well we've done. We'll have something like this or actually this, uh, to show the people we would meet with the extent of the issue in Texas. I mean, the key is that we're doing a really good job of eliminating homelessness, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And so now is not the time for funding to be reduced or eliminated. Uh, we also have um, some other things, and this is, we're going to, we uh, had some, coffee cups um, printed up and we're going to have those that you can leave behind as well. So um, hopefully people will enjoy uh, getting those. So uh, that will be part of your leave behind um, uh, package for those that are, that you're meeting with. So let me get into the meetings that we're setting up with you. Before we do that, I want to make sure it looks like Jennifer's answering all the questions, but I want to make sure there's no other questions. Actually, I think I'm getting into the answers for some of the questions here. Okay, so on this day, who are you meeting with? So right now we're setting up meetings with representatives and senators offices that sit on certain committees and um, these are committees that are very important to the funding that we're trying to keep. So we're prioritizing the meetings uh, with those offices and so right now Basically, what we're doing is we're setting up times with each one of those offices in which we can meet them for about 15 minutes. What we're going to do then is we're going to put you with one of those senators or representative staff members. Hopefully, you and a few other folks, a small group, would go to these meetings. Um, and what we're going to try to do, to the best of our ability, is put you with that legislator that covers your area. Um, and, but in some cases I will say that you could be meeting with someone who is from, who is covering a different area of Texas. But it's so important that you meet with them because they are on one of these committees that is so important to um, this funding that we're trying to keep. So we're really focused on these committees. The Senate Committee on Finance, Very, that's a very important one. Um, and I think that's one that actually we have an ability to um, to uh, educate with the importance of keeping this funding. I think there are a lot of folks on that committee that will understand uh, that importance and, and understand the importance of, of what we're doing um, with our goals of ending homelessness. And then the Senate Committee on Health and Human Services, and you can see I put it out here, DSHS, HCC related, HCC is Healthy Community Collaboratives. So on the Senate side, we're really focused on those two committees and the members that are um, on those committees. And let me see if I can pull this over here. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet that Actually, let me, got a lot of moving parts here. 
Okay, hopefully you can see that spreadsheet there. So we have a spreadsheet of listed with all of the senators, and you can see I've gone through, we're going through, and we're setting up meetings with them. There are um, about 20, 25 members uh, that we're trying to meet with there, and then the three House committees are listed here. So we're really focused on those first, and then uh, we can get to other meetings. But the reason those are so important is because they, they are um, making decisions about this funding. So on the House side, we have the House Committee on Appropriations, and this is the one that we met with uh, on Monday. Um, the Articles 6, 7, and 8, those are the ones that related to um, the TDHCA funding that we're trying to keep. And then the House Committee on Appropriations for Article 2 is the one that's concerned with the eight healthy community collaboratives uh, through DSHS. Uh, and then the House Committee on Urban Affairs is also an important one for us. Um, the first four uh, would hold priority uh, over the, that committee, but that's an important committee as well. So we are prioritizing the meetings with those committees first and the members of those committees first. Okay, so when you're there, like I said, we're setting up meetings, so you'll know that, say, you have an appointment to go meet Senator Colcourse's staff. So you'll have the name of the staff member. We'll give that to you. We'll give you the time. So when you go to the office, you just explain that you're there for your 2 p.m. meeting with staff member John, for example. And you're there as part of the Texas Homeless Network's Homeless Awareness Day. So introduce yourself, you know, where you're from, what you do, you know, and then state that you're there on behalf of your community, but also as Texas uh, and Texas as a whole. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to sit down with that staff member, and I would say that it will almost always be a staff member that you are meeting with. I would be really surprised if you actually meet with a senator or representative. Um, so far, we do not have any meetings set up with anyone but staff members. But they're, like Jennifer said, those meetings are very important. Please do not discount those meetings. What you'll do is um, you will sit down with them, and then what you'll do is you'll start presenting the materials that we have, and you'll use the script that we have to talk about how well we're doing in Texas in uh, eliminating homelessness, but also how much more of a need we have. Then you'll get into the legislative priorities, and we'll ask you to focus on those four priorities that um, we have outlined and we have highlighted in our priority worksheet. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Hopefully you're seeing that. Okay, here is our priority worksheet. We'll send this out after this. So um, we're really focusing on these funding sources and maintaining the progress we have and keeping that funding from being reduced or eliminated. Um, and then our other big priority is to the healthy community collaboratives and asking uh, legislators to consider allowing or putting language in that would allow for matching sources from funds other than private sources. So after you get through talking about how well we're doing and what our needs are, then you get into the priorities. Then what you can do after you talk about the priorities is you can use the infographics to further illustrate the importance of these priorities. And we have, we'll have the infographics um, for you ready, and we'll have all of this in order. So in your folder, we'll have everything in order so you can just take it page by page, and then when you're done, you can give it to the staff member you're meeting with, and you can be done. And like Jennifer said, report out. Um, 
we have a reporting form that we will share with you uh, that you can use for this. Um, and again, here's the agenda. I know uh, Jennifer went over it, but uh, this is just a refresh of that. 10.30 a.m. we'll check in. Hopefully you can get there a little bit early um, so you can park and have plenty of time to get to the meeting room. And then we'll have our meeting and then at around noon we'll have our group photo. So Eric, I kind of revised that since we'll be done earlier. So 11.45. So I'll send out okay. the updated agenda to everyone. So don't put too much stock into this one yet since we had to redo it. Yeah, like I said, things are changing uh, a lot. <laughs> um, and and a, lot of that, a lot of it depends on what rooms and the time is they're able to give us at the Capitol. But when we're done with the prep meeting, we'll have our photo, then we'll go to lunch. Hopefully a lot of folks can go to lunch with us at the Capitol Grill. And then we'll do our office visits. Um, and then hopefully uh, you'll have productive visits and um, we'll be able to report out that we had a lot of interest in what we're doing and we can follow up from that. And those report back forms that we're going to ask you to fill out, those are extremely important so that you get us back, you get those back to us because we'll know what to do with that information. So if a staff member asks for a particular a data point that you don't have, you can give us the report forms and we'll be able to find that data and make sure that that staff member gets that for their representative or senator's uh, review. Um, so uh, those things are very important to do as well. That follow-up is something that that will really pay off if we do that well. Um, okay, so that is all I have for this. And um, like I said, I was hoping that we could uh, get questions and then answer anything that you have questions about or if you have concerns, try to alleviate those concerns. Um, so I guess I'm asking if you can send in those questions, do so right now. And I know that there's been some questions asked and answered already, and hopefully everyone has seen those. Okay, well, <coughs> excuse me. Um, like uh, this slide says, your participation matters, and we're really hoping to get a good um, group to visit with folks uh, around the Capitol, and I think um, we will um, make a difference and, and, and get their attention on the 28th, so, so hope Eric, to see you there. We do have a couple of questions, and I'd like to just address this with the entire group. Um, a couple do. of people are asking about the meetings and when they'll get that list so they can share with their group? Okay, so if you have signed up, if you've RSVP'd for the list, um, we are working with that RSVP list to connect those people to the meetings that we have already set up. Now, if you have an RSVP, number one, I'd say please do that. Um, we're also going to contact each member on that RSVP list um, and ask them if they want us to set up a meeting with their representative or senator that may not be on one of these committees already. But I will say that there are so many um, representatives and senators on these committees, it's very likely there's overlap. So as we're setting up those meetings, we're trying to make those connections. I hope I'm making that clear. Um, let me see if I can explain. So if, if you're in Austin and your senator is Kirk Watson, so and you would like to meet with that with Kirk Watson's staff, well, you should know that Kirk Watson's already on two of the committees that we're looking at, so we're all going to have spaces for you to meet with uh, Senator Watson. So there won't, we won't have to have a separate uh, meeting set up, but we can set up those separate meetings for those members that aren't on one of those five committees that we're really focused on. Does that make sense, Jennifer? If it makes sense to you, hopefully it makes sense to everybody else. Yes, it makes sense to okay. me. And we'll and again, we'll send out all of this information so that you're not wondering, because if you wandered off to your email, you may not have caught all of this. So. And you said there was another question you wanted to address? The, those were the, and they were the same about meeting with the, okay. their members. 
Okay. Um, and I do have here, I know that um, Jennifer addressed this, but I think I should point this out. I think this is probably from Terry Caswell. She says, I will not be able to be there, but I'm a mayor of Athens, Texas, making a proclamation. And we'll make a lot of noise on social media on Tuesday. So thank you. Um, that's the type of uh, um, work we need, and that's the type of uh, education uh, we need to uh, promote. So thank you very much. So um, if there are any other questions, please ask. And looks like there was a question that just came in. Um, OK. Uh, actually, there was someone who asked about talking points and call-ins for those who can't attend. And Jennifer wrote back that we will get that information out, um, and we will. So um, if there are no other questions, please feel free to get on with your day. And hopefully we didn't interrupt your lunch too much. We know we did a little bit. But thank you for taking the time uh, to um, attend this webinar. And we hope to see you next Tuesday. So thank you. And we will sign out. And we will get you materials. Thank you.